something that needs a little fixing on Far Point Farms. Hey guys, it's Eric, owner of Far Point Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina. Got a chance to play with a relatively unusual scan tool, and this isn't really... I mean, I don't know. I guess it is a scan tool because it does have diagnostics, but it's more a direct link. And I don't, I'm not logged in here, which is unfortunate because I would love to be able to show you all the features and functions of this thing. But this is the Drive Pro, and we have diagnostics and programming abilities. You see this button up here, and I'm sorry, there's such a high reflective on this thing. It's just showing a lot of me and not a lot of the tool. That right there, you, you've literally got direct connection with tech support so they can log on to this thing and uh, kind of do the same diagnostics I'm doing from the chair here on the other side of the planet or wherever they may be, right? But we're going to go into diagnostics. I'll show you what I can out of this, but this it's kind of an interesting tool. I've never really spent any time with one of these, but a coworker was kind enough to let me play with it for the day. Um, I was looking to reprogram the seat sensors on a Mitsubishi and uh, this is unfortunately not able to do that. Not the tool's fault, this is actually the Mitsubishi's fault. They don't allow you to reset your zero. It comes preset from the factory. But it's a nice touch screen. Hopefully you can see it. I know it's a little tough with the, uh, with the glare here, but fast response. I did notice boot up time, which I, uh, the battery was dead, so I went ahead and booted it before filming, but um, they, it was a little slow, a little slow. And I don't know what year this came out, so let's go to enhanced. We're gonna go ahead and talk to. We're gonna let's see if we got any codes, right? No faults, okay. Let's see what else we can do. Sensors and actuations. Let's see what kind of work we can do with this thing. Calculated load, all right. Fuel trim, nice. All right, let me go ahead and start the car. Hopefully, it won't kill it. sit over here maybe that'll be better for the view yeah, maybe all right let's go with barometric sensor so pretty nice this let's try calculated load wow I will say okay maybe it was slow to boot up but that ain't slow to react and we can go to a graph here and the ability to save or zoom in let's zoom in a little bit Nice. We'll save that file. How about grid view? Back to where we are, right? Well, let's see what other ones we got here. Neat. So definitely has uh, the ability to read deeply into the system. Let me, uh, now, I'm not going to press any of these because the car is now running, but I can turn my relays on and off. Let's see what else we got here. Wow. Okay. So, I can turn on and off injectors, can cycle the fuel pump, EVAP, ignition timing I can advance or retard, radiator fan I can activate, coolant fan, right, AC relay, oil control valve. This car does have VVT, so it probably could do that. Wastegate solenoid. No, it doesn't have a turbo, so variable intake solenoid nice so as far as features and functions as far as how far this thing will dig into a system that's pretty much everything that's offered and that's a lot onboard tests well we can read our ECU we can do a leak test or we can reset all our adaptations I'm not going to do any of that but it's nice that it's offered all right, let's move into transmission. We have a CVT transmission. Let's see if we got any fault codes. No faults found, that's good. Uh, sensors and actuations. So we have CVT oil sensor signal, torque ratio, oil temp, slip. Wow, that is a lot going on there. Let's. Hmm. Let's go back up. A lot of stuff in there for sure. Huh. All right. 
onboard test with the CVT. So uh, I do work here at the house, uh, and this is something that doesn't come up on many scan tools. Uh, at 20,000 miles on these Mitsubishis, you're supposed to do a transmission service, CVT service, and CVT filter. This is a way of resetting that so that the computer knows that we're, we're back to 100%. That's really nice. And then, of course, you can read the module. All right, brake system is going into ABS. Shouldn't be any faults, but we'll go ahead and take a look. Nothing there. Does have freeze frames. That's kind of nice. But let's see what kind of sensors we got here. Brake pressure switch, park and brake switch. I'm gonna put the mark and brake on here. Oh, brake switch. Right, let's try that one. There we go. It doesn't want to read those, or it's having a slower reaction time. Let me try just the brake switch. All right, how about engine speed? Well, okay, so we're reading engine speed anyway. I'm not driving, so we get to maybe master. Okay, there we go. There was one. Steering angle. Right. Pretty nice. Wheels. This is where, you know, if you had a, an issue with ABS, probably you'd spend your time in there. Tire circumference. A lot of these you can change. So that's the size that's set in there. Actuations on this, we can set our pumps to turn on and off for these. So that would be functional, good stuff, right? Okay, let's go back. Calibration, steering angle calibration. That's pretty standard though. It, it should come with that. Airbag and occupation. So I was in the occupation sensor here looking at it. I could read fault, I could take a look and it's just gonna say empty or full, right? And you also have battery voltage. What I would have liked to have seen in a lot of cars, including a lot of Mitsubishis, have a recalibration. So if you've done work on the seats or whatever, you can recalibrate what zero is. Um, not a problem with this tool, but a problem with this car. They didn't offer that. The sensor and the computer for the seat are all built into one, and they just assume that it's going to be perfect right, right out of the gate. So if there's anything wrong with it, you got to replace the seat sensor and the computer. Onboard test is just going to give me ECU information. I won't get into that. And tire pressure monitoring system. E-Tax is like the onboard system here. This is like, you know, E-Tax for Mitsubishi is kind of like, you know, your central electronic module for most cars. It's just going to tell you all the stuff that it can do. And there's quite a bit, quite a bit. Front fog lights, right? I can turn those on. Let's see. I mean, so they got a lot of that stuff here. As far as programming goes, I'll get into that in a little bit, but there is some programming, and I don't know if it's gonna allow me to do any programming because I'm not logged in here, but you got your tire ID. You could always say, oh, I'm gonna change this and that. All right, we can back out of that. And that's about it for that. Let's go what we got here. Air conditioning, okay. Cool. I do like up here, got recalls right on the top. Uh, recall campaign number, the dates, everything. So right out of the gate, I, I think that's really a cool feature that this thing has. For most tools, you got to go into it. This one's telling you right when you go to that car, hey man, you got a problem here. So, all right, I'm going to go back to the home and let's see if we got programming. Nah, I'm not logged in, so I can't do that. But we do have file manager. I mean, there's a lot of files here that are saved. And we can take a look at some waveforms. You know, so anytime that anything gets recorded, it's a good place to store all this. Here's some uh, reports, you know, for cars that we worked on. Mercedes S-Class, you know, this was uh, this was just a few few weeks ago. But air conditioning issue, CAN message issue, O2 sensor issue. I mean, look at all this. Wow. Yeah, well, it's Mercedes. Radar speed control definitely having some issues. Adaptive brake issues. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, oh man, I love European cars, man. They'll make you rich. <laughs> God, that's painful. Yeah, let's find another one here. Let's take a look. <laughs> that was so bad, man. It's so bad. <laughs> European cars. Gosh. Uh, Volvo XC90, my the cars that made me rich. 
An identified fault code, memory button too low on the power seats, modules without faults, and there's a bunch of them, right? Modules not communicating. Ah, the CEM. <laughs> Very cool. Let's try another one. So it gives you a lot of really cool stuff. We got images as well, which I showed you before, but yeah, so we have some photos. Um, we've got uh, another waveform here that somebody calculated load they were looking at, so that's kind of cool. And let's try one more file. Uh, since it doesn't have customer data listed on here, I feel like it's okay to show you all some of this stuff. Uh, another M class. Okay, this is just somebody doing a drive, right? We're, we're looking at our drive cycles. We're looking at stuff that's happening. So very in depth when it comes to that. God, I wish, I wish the sun wasn't shining quite so brightly. I feel like y'all ain't getting a good view of it. I, I'll, I like in person, not a reflective issue. I can see everything clearly, but the camera is picking up, camera's picking up that glare, and that's definitely messing with stuff. I'm sorry about that, folks. Camera, you know, you take your picture. It's got a rear-facing camera, so it's probably just going to show because I've got it sit. Yeah, I've got it sitting up against the thing there, but you know, sort of. There it is. Look, there's the dash, right? You can't see any of this stuff. What a shame. Okay, we'll close that. And then we have our web portal. But again, this is nice. This reminds me a little bit of the. Um, OTC uh, Evolve that I have here, and you've got access to all of them on tap. You don't have to pay extra, like a Snap-on tool is gonna make you use only their stuff, and it usually costs extra. This is all just included on there, which is nice. So, there you go. Uh, down over here, we have our power button, we have our wireless network connection, we have our battery, which it was dead, task manager, right? And that's just saying, hey, you have Drive Pro open, Right, and if I go back to it, you also have this this uh, list you were looking at, this file that was saved, so that's kind of cool. I can close all that. Screenshot, if I want to take a screenshot, and I'm not sure what Legacy does here. Sure, let's go ahead and see what happens. I haven't played with Drive Pro Legacy today. Ooh, let's go with demo mode. Um, this is definitely a European stuff. Uh, so electron throttle module tests, VIN tests, COM tools, key and remote coding. That's a nice feature to have. A lot of scan tools are going that direction now with remote coding. I mean, all cars are being sold with pretty fancy keys now. They have, you know, identifiers in them and they need to be programmed. So you can get a key cut, but you won't make it work. So that's kind of cool that they do offer that built right in there. All right, let's see what else we got. I think that's about it. This, if I was logged in, would again bring me back. There it is. Man, I'm sorry about that video quality. That would bring me back into customer service and remote help, home button, legacy button, and screenshot. That's it. Man, I wish I could take a better video of this, but uh, without being logged in, I can't really get into some of the cooler things that it does. But I did want to take a moment to show it to you while I had it in my possession. And thanks to them for letting me borrow this for the day. It's been good doing some diagnostics with a tool you're not familiar with. You know, every scan tool has its pluses and minuses. This one, a little slow on the boot up is all I'm going to complain about on it. Other than that, though, I've been very happy with it. Till next time, my friends. Take care.